many people out there are zombie addicts or affected by those who are zombie addicts? Okay, so almost everyone, kind of. So if you actually think about it, zombies have kind of gotten a bad rap over the years. Everyone thinks you, they want to kill them. But that's maybe not true. Maybe they just want brain food. Maybe they're trying to get our memories and our knowledge and our intelligence. But no one ever thinks about that. So my point is, is zombies may have got it right because everyone needs brain food. But the thing is, is we aren't zombies. So how do we get this brain food? We get it through classrooms, lectures, PowerPoints. Um, but the thing is, is those aren't very uh, active. They're not, they're very individual, they're solitary. We're not getting a lot of visual cues from them. So what, what could we do? Here's the time to take a poll. Who remembers that really boring class in high school or college? How many people had to memorize something? But how many people could actually tell me all the stuff they memorized? No one. Okay, no visual cues, because you're memorizing. So here's a little academic study for you. So in a 90-minute class, you actually are only learning about two-thirds of the time. Two professors at IU decided to look at brainwave function. Well, when they did, they saw that kids were only learning for 10 minutes, and then they would shut down. Then they would take a five-minute break and learn for another eight minutes. So you're actually, in a 90-minute lecture, you pretty much shut down for at least a third of it. And then what do you get after it? You don't remember anything. Sometimes. Some professors are great. So anyway, if you're in the jungle, here's a little analogy for visual cues. If you're in the jungle and you're afraid you're going to get eaten by a tiger, you memorize what a paw print looks like for a tiger. But there are like 80 different million cats out there. So you're like panther, uh, lion, anything like that. House cat, not going to kill you. So what you actually do is through those visual cues, you're learning, you're understanding, you're gaining knowledge because you're actually doing something. And you realize that, hey, I'm not going to get eaten by a tiger or the 80 other million cats out there. So what have we learned so far? We're not zombies, so we can't eat brains. We won't get eaten by lions because we're pretty killer at understanding footprints. And lectures and sometimes PowerPoints are a little bit boring. And this slide goes on a little bit long, and that is my example of boring. So what is a little cheesy, but our brains are kind of like a light switch. You can either forcefully turn it on by the memorization that we talked about, or you can actually organically turn it on by these visual cues. A lot of teachers will use, you know, group projects, or they'll, my teacher used to throw a pencil at kids. But the thing is, is in real life, technology can be used. So a teacher in New York studied her kids for two years. She saw that grades or reading level was under, uh, under the grade reading level. But then when she introduced iPads and literacy technology into her classroom, at the end of another two years, all of her students were at or above the grade reading level. So by introducing technology and giving those kids rewards and something to strive for, they were actually learning. How many people remember Mario? I'm a poll-driven person, apparently. But if you remember Mario, you learn that you run into a mushroom, you die. You run into a turtle, you die. But by jumping up and hitting a brick, which in real life would actually kill you, so don't do it, you get a reward. So in that reward, you learn by doing. It's, I mean, it's kind of like a common stream throughout my PowerPoint. But basically, you're learning by doing. You're understanding trial and error. Give, like, we want to give kids that chance. And even up into adult age, like, you don't want to have to memorize things. And this brings me back to zombies. It had a point. So Math vs. Zombies is this really fun uh, game on the iPad and Android. You should download it if you can. I mean, I do. And it's really fun. It has goofy, fun, creepy music. But the thing is, Walking Dead zombies aren't the zombies in this game. Technology and video games don't have to be scary. Parents don't need to fear that their kids are going to just shoot things or they're not going to learn anything. The creators of this game turned a really fun idea into something that kids could understand at a very young age. And if, when you actually solve a problem, you don't slice the zombie's head off. It actually just zaps them with lightning and they turn into a normal kid. So the kids are rewarded and they get to save somebody in the process. And if the zombie gets to you, it just shakes. So what's the point? Video games aren't scary and gory. Parents can understand, need to understand, and we should tell them that it's okay for their kids to learn through technology, that we should create in the educational space with technology instead of like contributing to the noise, and that visual cues are key. So the point of this talk is honestly just not to be afraid of technology, and I'm sure a lot of you as you're in an Ignite talk aren't, but that's what we should express to people, that there are visual cues, and we should always remember that zombies are people too.